Tonight on Life on the Rock, we have Dan Johnson, co-founder and creative director of 4PM Media. We'll have a sneak peek at some of his upcoming documentary projects and much more. Tonight on Life on the Rock, we have Dan Johnson. He is the creative director of 4PM Media. He makes uh, documentary projects about real life faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, just a few months back, we had we interviewed Father Dave Pavanka, and he, he did the series uh, Wild Goose, and it was 4PM Media who filmed it, and you know it was it was just a stunning, stunning. Um, uh, a series there, you know, that the was just so captivating. Of course, Father Pavanka's words, but the backdrops used, and it just really put you at ease and, and, and just really gripped you. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was good. So now we're going to show you a trailer for one mm -hmm. of his projects, A Sign of Contradiction. It's about the life of St. Francis of Assisi. On March 13, 2013, at around 7 p.m., the eyes of the world are on a balcony overlooking St. Peter's Square. Abemus Papam. Abemus Papam. We have a Pope, a Jesuit from Argentina. But as soon as the eyes of the world were looking upon this balcony in Rome, our attention was diverted here to Assisi. The Pope would take the name Francis. Francisco. But why Francis? Why did the Holy Father invite the entire world to come and to look at this small village which overlooks the Umbrian Valley? Pope Francis would answer that question himself. He would say that St. Francis changed the way we lived. St. Francis challenged the civil authorities. He challenged the church authorities. The Holy Father went on to say, St. Francis changed history. But how did St. Francis change history? I mean, what did he do that would cause the Holy Father to say, changed history. You know, I've had the opportunity dozens of times over the last 20 years to bring pilgrims here to Assisi, and I often hear the same or similar things. I hear pilgrims say things like, I had no idea who Francis was. They'll say to me things like, I knew that Francis loved animals, but he's so much more than that. Somebody said to me, Francis is more than a birdbath. Yes, yes, Francis of Assisi is more than just a birdbath. But who is he? If all you know about Francis of Assisi was that he loved animals or that he was poor, then you're missing the power, you're missing the beauty, you're missing even the simplicity of St. Francis of Assisi. But who was St. Francis? Francis of Assisi was a poet. He was a dreamer. He was a lover. He was on a journey searching and finding and losing. He was a real person. He wasn't this mythical figure of the past, but he was a man, not unlike you and I. He was tormented. He was tormented with temptations, with doubts, with fears. He was broken and he was healed. He was poor and he was forever rich. He stood before the powers of the world and he said things like, become small, become little, quiet, broken. And if you can do that, you'll find Jesus. And he encountered Jesus in everyone and in everything. He was, in a word, a disciple. Perhaps the greatest of disciples. creative director of 4PM Media, and EWTN now is airing The Wild Goose. Wild Goose with Father Dave. Yeah. Father Dave, and you mm -hmm. produced, directed, edited? <laughs> a little bit of everything. everything yeah. So shot uh, yeah. shot on it and uh, and edited most of it. Worked with uh, Jonathan Weiss and uh, mm -hmm. a couple others on the editing with that. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but yeah, yeah, The Wild Goose. So 
So we talked with Father uh, Dave about uh, the Holy Spirit and mm. what is the message he was trying to convey. Uh, but maybe from the filmmaker's perspective, because we have a lot of, a lot of young budding filmmakers, a lot of people want to be in this industry. Is it cutthroat or is it tough? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, actually, I'm, I am. Uh, I'm just very excited with mm -hmm. how generous. Uh, right. I think a lot of the. I, I'm still trying to figure out if I fit into the younger generation of filmmakers, uh, yeah. somewhere in between. Yeah. Um, but uh, very generous with their talents mm. and, and extremely gifted. Right. Uh, not cutthroat at all. We are sharing our ideas, sharing right. our um, skills with one another and, mm. and working really hard to create a, a community and a, and a collaboration mm. around mm. the type of projects that we're working on. Yeah. And your films are beautifully shot, beautiful music. You know, you hold the moment mm. and, you're, and you told me before, you're really trying to speak to the heart. Tell us about that process in filming. Uh, sure, yeah. I, it's, I find like, well, I was, I'm a graduate of Franciscan University and, and was a theology major. And uh, I'd sit in my theology classes and, and so much of it uh, speaks to the head. You know, you're mm -hmm. learning the catechism. If you're a catechetics major, like my wife was, you have an exam at the end uh, where you have to know basically the entire catechism. Mm -hmm and it's head oriented, but I remember the reason I wanted to learn those things mm -hmm. is because of all the, the messages to my heart. And that mm -hmm. came through the stories of the saints, mm -hmm. uh, saints that I loved, fell in love with as a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, but it also came through the people that I encountered uh, at Franciscan and at other places, people mm -hmm. who I looked up to and respected and uh, could see uh, the way in which the faith engages who we are as human beings. Mm -hmm. And that's the inspiration uh, and so for a lot of the projects, you know, my mother and father-in-law, Jack and Jamie McAleer, uh, we always talk about just that idea of 4 p.m. is meant to engage the heart mm -hmm. uh, and really inspire people. Um, our kind of tagline is encounter, awaken, inspire. Mm -hmm. um, that people who see the things that we produce encounter truth are right. kind of awakened interiorly to that right. and then right. inspired to act on it, to live, right. to live that way. And the meaning of 4 p.m., why is it called that? Yeah, John, I... Uh, I wish I could take credit for this one, but I can't. <laughs> um, my mother, in oh, the Holy Spirit, she'd allow me to say mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit inspired this. Uh, but my mother-in-law uh, and father-in-law were actually in adoration in uh, the scripture, John 1, 39. He says, come and see, and it was uh, Andrew and another apostle. And, and uh, in, in that moment, it sort of ends, and there's this kind of throwaway line mm -hmm. uh, that's been spoken about in a number of uh, talks, and Curtis Martin actually talked about it. Mm -hmm. But uh, the line is, the hour was about four in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And uh, the idea is that the moment of encounter is important. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so 4 p.m. And, and we wanted something, honestly, that played, that could play in the secular world, right. and that people would see that and mm -hmm. be intrigued by it mm -hmm. um, and, and ask the question, you right. know, what does that mean? And that's a great opportunity to be able to talk about right. uh, what we find important. And you, did you always want to be a filmmaker? I never thought it was possible. Yeah. <laughs> um, I still struggle even, I guess, to some degree, uh, referring to myself as a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. um, you know, growing up, that's what my family did, is we watched, uh, together, we watched a lot of movies. Mm -hmm. you know, some, some families uh, play board games. Um, mm -hmm. I was never an avid reader, um, although I'm sure that that would help with my storytelling. Mm -hmm. um, but we watched a ton of movies. Would you debate the movies, talk about them after? I, my brothers and I would, yeah. yeah. We. Um, uh, we definitely would, um, and, and really talk about, uh, especially as we got older, uh, high school and college, we'd talk about just what's the meaning behind it. Right. And that's the part of story that I love, is, yeah. is what you're uh, able to communicate yeah. through these stories of uh, you know, people you're watching, whether it's one of the first movies I saw as a mm -hmm. kid was Rookie of the Year, and the story of this, this kid who breaks his arm Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and now can, can throw a hundred and something miles an hour and how, mm -hmm. wow, that's, you know, that's awesome, what a great story, or Mission Impossible mm -hmm. and that music mm -hmm. that hits and you're, <laughs> you get into that yeah, story yeah. and, uh, yeah. you know, as a young man, the excitement of that. Mm -hmm. but, um, but later, really looking at life and, and how we tell stories and engage the faith component and, and pull that into uh, the films that we make. And what brought you to Steubenville? My older brother. <laughs> uh, my parents were looking at the landscape of college uh, for my older brother, who was three years ahead of me. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they were looking out, what they saw was this beacon at Franciscan, and they wanted uh, to be sure to uh, 
protect him from the pitfalls that lay ahead <laughs> as yeah. best they could. Yeah. And so we ended up in, in Steubenville, and I was there in high school. And yeah. I ended up going there myself, so I kind of so joked lived my brother. So you in the town? I actually lived in Steubenville okay. in high okay. school, yeah, yeah. And did you have like some conversion experience yourself or some awakening? That oh, sure, I think everybody has yeah. to. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I did, uh, in college at Franciscan, mm -hmm. I was at a uh, festival of praise, uh, adoration, uh, time in front of the Blessed Sacrament, and um, felt kind of a sense of uh, there's something more. Mm -hmm and that I was missing something, uh, even though I was studying theology and doing yeah. all these different things. And I don't know that I was even really all that, in, when you go to Franciscan, it's kind of what you do. Mm. <laughs> you go to your theology classes <laughs> and you take it all in. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it's part of the atmosphere, which is a great thing. Yeah. At the same time, you can just kind of fall into it. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember being in adoration and adoration finished and I walked outside and there's these quads up above the, um, uh, up above the campus uh, or the soccer fields. and. Mm -hmm just kind of went up there and just prayed and just whatever it is that you want, I'm going to try and do that. Yeah. And, um, and that was a real, that was probably the first real moment mm -hmm. uh, where I honestly engaged the faith mm -hmm. and engaged God in a relationship with him that was mine, yeah. um, not what had been handed on to me yeah. you know, from my family. Well, it definitely took hold. And we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll talk more about your films and uh, some of the messages therein. So don't go away. Back in a moment. talk about some of your films. Uh, one of them we showed on the network, talked to Father Dave about it, was uh, one about Father Michael Scanlon, a father to us all. Mm. I thought the power of that was beautifully done. You had the excerpts of people talking about his life, but then the message of his life. Mm. Tell us about that. Yeah, uh, Father Michael Scanlon is, just his story is phenomenal. Mm. And, and what he was able to, to do, inspired by the mm. Spirit, uh, do for the Church in America is amazing. But it really, his witness is that he said yes. He didn't really see the road ahead. He just yeah. said he just said yes. And and for me, that was uh, what I felt like was most inspiring mm -hmm. and relatable to each of mm -hmm. us is that we may not go down the same road as mm -hmm. Father Mike did, uh, but we can certainly uh, do whatever the Spirit's calling us to do. To sort of be open to that and to say yes is a, is to a big give thing. God permission in our life. Yeah, just to do what he what he yeah. wants to do. Yeah, right. great message of hope. And that you're really aiming at that hope message that. To, as you told me before, to see God working in your life, that's what you like to show in mm. your films, mm -hmm. and that gives us hope to think God is at work, right? Yes, I mean, to see, in, in order to see God's work, we also yeah. have to uh, engage the idea that we struggle, mm -hmm. that we sometimes doubt, that we mm -hmm. suffer, uh, we question you know, where God is, and to be able to actually talk about those things, mm -hmm. and to see those things, to share those things, whether it's uh, Father Mike, um, and, and what he experienced, or if it's St. Francis mm -hmm. uh, in Sign of Contradiction, even the struggles that he experienced, that human nature that's involved there. He saw himself as the greatest of sinners, mm -hmm. and it's St. Francis. Mm -hmm. um, so that to s we need to see that, right. and then to see where God is working, and that's the hope, that in spite of yeah. the fears, the doubts, the suffering, the struggles, yeah. that there's hope, and that's where we, right. en we en encounter Christ. And Father Dave's in that right, Sign of Contradiction film about St. Francis. Yes, so it's, yeah. an, it's kind of a, yeah. uh, not really a follow-up mm -hmm. to The Wild Goose, but it's mm -hmm. uh, the next project that we did with Father Dave, and, and that'll be releasing in the fall of 2018 yeah. Yeah. Um, around his feast day. Uh, right. Yeah. And I, I was struck by that line. He, he talked about St. Francis kind of being in anguish, torment, and sorrow. <laughs> it's like very much uh, deep in the human condition. Yes, yeah. And yet one of the greatest saints mm -hmm. the church has ever mm -hmm. produced. I think that's what we love about yeah. him. Yeah. yeah, that's what we love about him. Now we're also going to show a trailer for Speaking to Sparrows. Tell us about that one. Sure. So Speaking to Sparrows is a project we worked on with uh, Project Light Ministries, which is based out of North Carolina. It's a startup nonprofit whose goal is to shine light uh, in the places that we maybe don't talk about enough mm -hmm. or um, to bring them out into the open. That, uh, so Speaking to Sparrows is about the struggles that young women face, and, and there are a lot of really difficult uh, things that, that are young women are, are dealing with, mm -hmm. starting in, in junior high uh, through to college. Um, you know, really, whether it's body image, um, abuse, mm -hmm. uh, cutting, um, mm -hmm. 
And there's just so many, eating so many disorders. things. Uh, yeah. Eating yeah. disorder, um, the father figure, broken father relationships. Yeah. Um, but to not just talk about them up here, but to talk right. with young women uh, right. who are at the beginning of that healing process, you know, right. what that looks like uh, as they're engaging, right. you know, what's going on in their life, and, and right. as they're engaging God for the first time. But then also seeing people like uh, Sister Miriam, James Hydland, uh, telling her story a little further down mm -hmm. the road of healing, uh, right. the hope that exists there. Right. Uh, she has this great line at the end of it, um, people asking all the time, you know, is it, is it hard or is it easy? Mm -hmm. She says, no, it's hard. It's, it's very hard, mm -hmm. but it's worth it. Mm. Um, and that's the message, is that it's worth it mm. to, to build this relationship with, um, with others and, and with Christ. Right. You said you, you love independent films. <laughs> By your own admission, you've watched a lot of movies. Yes, <laughs> yes. What yeah. do you like about the independent genre? Today? I love, I mean, you, yeah. The storytellers yeah. and the directors, the filmmakers that are making these, a lot of times they, they're really striving to tell human stories. Yeah. And uh, that's where I think in a lot of the projects that, that we do, what we want to get towards mm -hmm. is that level of filmmaking where mm -hmm. we're able to craft these beautiful stories. The element that's missing is, is the uh, infusion of the faith into right. those, infusion right. of hope into right. those. Um, but I love independent film because there's real story there. I mean, mm -hmm. You can look at the uh, big blockbusters, the mm -hmm. action movies, which I'll go see and enjoy. Yeah. Um, they're entertaining. Right. Um, but you look at some of those independent films and, and uh, crafting a story, being yeah. able to connect yeah. with human desire. Yeah. Uh, there's a searching that you can feel in some of those films. Right. Uh, you know, infuse that with, some, with uh, a faith component. Right. Right. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's like they grab you. Like sometimes you'll see a movie, like a, it entertains you. And I don't, I don't remember anything about it. You know, mm, six yeah. months later. <laughs> yeah. But it's like these other movies that kind of move slower, and you kind of relate to something in the movie. Mm -hmm. And then I love that idea of like giving some hope, giving some some of the Christian answer to the struggle, the anguish, whatever it is that we have. You know, I think Christians we have the greatest drama. I mean, mm. we know the battle, good yeah, and great evil. Great story to tell. Yeah. yeah, we have the best yeah. story to tell. Yeah. And so we should be winning all the Academy Awards mm -hmm. and everything, right? Well, <laughs> and it doesn't have to be um, propose something and allow the spirit to work in it. Mm -hmm. um, and so you may watch some films, uh, and there's some little thing that kind of sticks with you and is inspiring you right. or pushing you forward right. in a positive sense. A lot of times, that's the the spirit moving, and in a, in a right. faith film, it's really that. You know, really, if you if you can mm -hmm. leave that uh, uh, that moment for them, that aha moment that they right. have, for the spirit to sort of speak into that, yeah. that's when um, yeah. I think faith-based filmmaking is really can be really really powerful. And you know, when you got that moment, or is it always kind of self-doubt there? there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, always trying to get better. <laughs> <laughs> always trying to get better. There are so many great storytellers and, uh -huh. and uh, filmmakers out there. And even in the Catholic community, there's so many great, yeah. even young, talented, uh -huh. uh, that are have this ability to just craft mm -hmm. stories, mm -hmm. um, tell beautiful stories. Yeah. So we're always trying to. I'm always trying to get better. Well, thank you so much, Dan. Yeah, thank you, us. Father. Yeah. We're now going to watch a trailer for one of Dan's documentaries, "Speaking to Sparrows." Our society really sets the stage for a lot of body image disasters. Nobody was really talking about you if you weren't hooking up with someone or you weren't dating someone. Sometimes as women we don't know how to stand up for ourselves. You have to live up to the expectations. Women, if you're young and skin, skinny and pretty and funny and sexually attractive and sexually available, then you're going to be happy. And, you know, nobody really usually rationally sits down to think about, is this really true? <laughs> We as women, we deserve so much better. I mean, we need sisters. We weren't meant to live alone. There has to be more for me in life.
Well, we had a great show for you tonight, I think, with Dan Johnson. You know, he's a married man, he's got five kids, early 30s, he's making these films. And he, was, he told me that, you know, he loves independent movies because they're, they're real, they speak to the heart. But oftentimes in our secular culture, you know, they fall short right. of giving us a real answer, a real mm -hmm. solution, a real direction yeah. to the difficulties in mm -hmm. life. So he likes to show that in his documentaries to connect with people mm -hmm. on the level of the struggle, the brokenness, mm -hmm. but then also to show how God, in, in very simple stories, how God is at work. Yeah. And that gives us hope. Oh yeah, there's much hope there because we've seen, we see people who've been through hard times and we, and we hear their testimony, how God has entered their life or they have allowed God to enter their life and how he's transformed them. And what does this tell us? This tells us that God can do the same for us as well. You know, that he can come into my life, that he can raise me up, give me healing, and help me to move forward. Yeah. So, you know, part of the trailers we watched, one was on Sign of Contradiction about the life of Francis, and Father Dave Pavanka, mm -hmm. who was speaking in that mm -hmm. segment we saw, talked about the difficulties of St. Francis, and that his answer was to get humble, to get small, mm -hmm. to let God work in his life. And that's our challenge, that's our end of the vineyard challenge this week, is to say yes to God. Mm -hmm in the brokenness, in the mm -hmm. difficulties, in the sorrow, mm -hmm. give God permission to work. That's the answer. Mm -hmm. And speaking to sparrows, I think, continues the yeah. same theme, doesn't it? Uh, it sure does, yeah. yeah. That, that, like you said, Father Mark, that's where it begins. Saying yes to God, you know, we're all weak, we're all broken, we feel inadequate, we feel unworthy, but God will make us worthy. All It begins with, with us saying yes and opening our hearts to His love and allowing Him to work in our weakness because it's in the weakness where we're made strong. You know, remember St. Paul, my grace is sufficient for what Jesus told St. Paul, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So what I love about the, the humility of that message is that every one of mm -hmm. us can say yes to God. Mm -hmm. So we don't need a, a particular situation to have a great life. Mm -hmm. What we need is to give God this permission to say yes, mm -hmm. like our Blessed Mother did when she said, let it be done to me according to your word, to the art, to the gate, art, Archangel Gabriel, she was saying yes, and see what happened through her. So we can all say yes, let God work, and be part of his kingdom in a new way. So may our Heavenly Father shine his face upon you, may he give you his peace, and may he bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We'll see you next week on Life on the Rock. As I journeyed to the tomb, there was nowhere else to go. With eyes full of tears, and when he spoke my name, we were standing face to face. And I have seen the Lord, I have seen the Lord. Lord